Ever wondered how a strike can bring a city to a standstill? Let's delve into the story of the Go Northeast bus strikes. Go Northeast, a vital cog in the public transportation system, has been serving communities across the northeast of England for decades. Its buses have been the lifeblood of the region, providing a crucial link for thousands of people to their workplaces, schools, and recreational activities. But in the late summer of 2023, all of that came under threat. Towards the end of September, a cloud of discontent began to gather over Go Northeast. The staff, feeling undervalued and underpaid, decided to take a stand. They announced a strike, a move that would disrupt the daily routines of countless individuals. The first week-long strike kicked off on the 30th of September, a day that marked the beginning of a period of turmoil Drivers swapped their steering wheels for placards, their bus lanes for picket lines. The reaction among the staff was a mix of solidarity and apprehension. After all, a strike is never an easy decision. It's a sacrifice, a bold statement of defiance, a plea for fair treatment. And what about the customers, the everyday people who relied on these buses? They found themselves caught in the middle of this industrial dispute. Many expressed sympathy for the drivers, recognizing the importance of fair wages. But for others, the inconvenience of the strike was a source of frustration. The daily commute turned into a daily struggle as people scrambled to find alternative modes of transport. The initial impact of the strike on public transportation was significant. Bus routes were left deserted, bus stops became mere landmarks rather than bustling hubs of activity. The city's rhythm was disrupted, its pulse irregular, but this was merely the first act in a drama that was still unfolding. The end of the first week brought no resolution, only a deepening sense of uncertainty. The wheels of the buses had stopped turning, but the wheels of the dispute were only just beginning to spin. As the first week of the strike came to a close, little did anyone know this was just the beginning. Week two brought more unrest, further exacerbating the problem. The second week-long strike, spanning from the 14th to the 20th of October, saw a swell in discontent among both staff and customers alike. The once orderly lines at bus stops transformed into frustratingly long waits, and the bustle of the city seemed to grind to a slower pace. Union members, stubborn in their resolve, voiced their concerns loudly. Statements echoed across the city, a chorus of dissatisfaction. One union leader declared, our demands are not unreasonable, we deserve fair compensation for our work. The sentiment was shared, echoed by drivers who felt their pay didn't reflect the value they brought to the community. The bosses, on the other hand, were in a tight spot. One manager confessed, We understand the grievances, but we're also looking at the numbers. It's a tough balancing act. Their words, however, did little to quell the mounting dissatisfaction. Customers, caught in this crossfire, were left grappling with the inconvenience. A local resident remarked, I'm late for work almost every day now, it's a complete mess. Their daily routines disrupted. The public was growing increasingly frustrated with the situation. The city, once thriving with the rhythm of routine, now found itself in a state of disruption. The regular hum of buses became a rare sound, replaced by the echo of disgruntled voices and blaring car horns. The strike was more than just an industrial action. It was a ripple effect that touched every corner of the city. Struggling businesses, late employees, frustrated students, all were casualties of this escalating situation. The city's pulse was irregular, its rhythm disrupted. The lifeblood of the city, its public transportation was under siege, and the entire city felt the pinch. Yet amidst the chaos and discontent, there was a glimmer of hope. A sense of community began to emerge. Strangers offered rides to those stranded, and local businesses started delivery services to help those unable to travel. The city was adapting, but the question remained. How long could this go on? The situation was escalating, and the city was feeling the pinch. Defiance took center stage as the staff rejected an insulting pay offer, leading to an unprecedented 12-week strike. This decision, made on the 28th of October, 2023, echoed the sentiments of the staff who had reached their breaking point. It was a decision that would ripple across the company, its customers, 
and the city itself. To the staff, it was a stand for dignity and fair compensation. They had been enduring long hours, challenging conditions, and now a pay offer that failed to meet their expectations. The drivers, the lifeblood of the service, spoke out. One driver put it this way, We're not just driving buses, we're keeping the city moving. We deserve a pay that reflects that. The union backed their members firmly. The union representative stated, This is about more than pay. It's about respect, recognition, and the right to a decent living wage. We stand with our members in this fight. Yet, the defiant stand also meant disruption for the customers. Commuting became a daily challenge. The buses, once reliable and frequent, were now sporadic at best. A regular commuter voiced her frustration. I rely on the buses to get to work. It's been a nightmare. I support the drivers, but we, the public, are caught in the middle. The company found itself in a tough position. The cost of the strike was mounting, and the reputation of the service was on the line. The CEO expressed his concern. We understand the frustration of our staff, but this strike is causing significant financial strain. We're doing everything we can to reach a fair resolution. Yet, amidst the chaos, there was a glimmer of hope. The city was adapting, finding new ways to keep moving. Carpooling initiatives sprung up, and people found solidarity and shared struggle. The city was in the grip of the strike, but a resolution was on the horizon. The tide began to turn in early November as some services resumed, signaling a shift in the impasse. After weeks of silence on the streets, the first echoes of bus engines broke the quiet on the 7th of November, 2023. The decision to resume some services was not a total solution, but it was a start. School contracts were the first to get back on track. The sight of yellow buses chugging along their routes was a comforting symbol of normality for many. The ferry service also recommenced, providing a lifeline for those cut off by the strike. Meanwhile, the NHS and Sainsbury's contracts were also back in action. The rumble of the buses was more than just noise. It was a sign that progress was being made. The impact of this was palpable. The silent streets were slowly starting to hum with life again. But the city was not out of the woods yet. On the 8th of November, a skeleton service was introduced. Buses were now running every 30 to 60 minutes. It wasn't the full service the city was used to, but it was a lifeline for those who had no other means of transportation. The skeleton service was a turning point. It wasn't perfect, but it was a step in the right direction. It was a sign that both sides were willing to compromise, to find a way forward. It was a sign that there was light at the end of the tunnel. The city started to breathe again. The tension that had hung in the air started to lift. Commuters began to plan their journeys. People started to go about their daily lives and the city began to move again. The skeleton service was more than just buses running on a reduced schedule. It was a symbol of hope. It was a sign that the worst was over and better days were on the horizon. And for a city that had been held hostage by the strike, it was a much needed glimmer of hope. Finally, there was a glimmer of hope for the weary city. As normal service resumed on the 2nd of December, 2023, the city breathed a sigh of relief. The clatter of bus engines, the chime of stop requests, the chatter of daily commuters. These familiar sounds once again filled the streets, marking the end of a tumultuous period in public transport history. The 12-week strike, which had only lasted five thanks to a deal agreed upon in early December, had left a significant mark. The cost was not just monetary, Although the estimated figure hovered around a staggering £5 million, the cost was also in the daily routines disrupted, the relationships strained, and the trust that needed to be rebuilt. For bosses, the strike served as a costly reminder of the importance of fair wage negotiations. The insulting pay offer that sparked the extended strike was a misstep they were keen not to repeat. In the aftermath, there was a renewed commitment to open dialogue and fair treatment, Union members, drivers, and other staff members, on the other hand, felt a sense of triumph. Their collective action had led to change. It was a tough fight, but they emerged from it with a stronger sense of unity and a profound belief in their power to effect change. The general public, 
inconvenienced though they were, largely expressed understanding. They recognized the right to fair pay and better working conditions. As buses started running again, there was a sense of returning normalcy, but also a newfound respect for the people who drove them to work, school, and everywhere in between. The aftermath of the strikes was a time of reflection. Lessons were learned, and changes were implemented. But perhaps the most enduring legacy of the strikes was the powerful message they sent. They highlighted the importance of valuing workers, of listening to grievances, and of standing together in the face of adversity. The strikes were a stark reminder of the power of collective action and the importance of fair treatment for all workers.